Good morning. Uh, this video is going to talk about my new idea, 5209's cutter bar. I couldn't find anything on YouTube that showed me any videos or anything on the disassembly or what they look like on the inside. So if this helps somebody, I hope I can. I don't know. I learned by just tearing into it. I worked for a farmer, oh, probably 10 or 12 years ago, that he did all of his own mechanic work, um, motors, transmissions, everything. And I learned a lot from him. But one thing he always stressed is that when he bought a piece of equipment, he, uh, he always bought a service manual or a parts manual. And I did that. I bought a service manual for this machine off of Amazon for 30 or $35. It gives you blown up pictures of what things look like on the inside of them gearboxes. It gives you torque specs. It gives you um, disassembly and assembly instructions. Now granted, I didn't go buy them totally, but it, it gives you something to go by. It gives you pictures to look at. The only thing that they don't give you is part numbers. Now the parts book would do that. I have one for my round baler um, and a couple of my other, the skid loader that I have, I've got the parts book for that. So you can go and, and pick the part number off, call the dealership, tell them what you're looking at. They can look it up on their, in their books or whatever and go by that. Now granted, my stuff's old enough that most of the part numbers have changed, but um, with that, I ended up going online and change, turn you around. I ended up getting a whole different gearbox. I bought it off. Oh, I think I went through Tractor House, found a guy that was scrapping one out, and ended up going that route. Because mine, these portions right here. Where these bolts go in were broke out so bad that I couldn't reuse this housing. Had that not happened, all I would have had to have bought was these gears. Um, this broke a tooth out on this side. This cap is what goes on top and holds your turtle. That also broke a gear off right there. But this manual gives me pictures on how to take this all apart. You take that nut off and that's what sandwiches your turtle down on top of it. I'll see if I can get that out of there. Inside here, there's two more bearings and snap rings and retainers. That manual shows you how to tear that apart. Um, now this one's pretty good. You can read the part numbers off the bearings. This is what that gear looks like. It was really easy to pound that out. I just put a, put this in the vise, put a, used a drift and, and tapped on it a few times and it slid right out. But I will save this. I could use that further down the road. This is my new one. These are the <clears throat> These are the four bolts that hold this cap onto the top of this gearbox. So when this comes off, I set that here. These shims, there was two of them in this particular one. They are, I believe, five thousandths a piece. That's what sets the backlash on your gear. All that holds these, this, this sits in here like this. There's a bearing goes here and a bearing goes here. Well, on the outside, I think I can show you, I'll show you tearing it apart, but right here is this snap ring. Then there's this little spring type deal that holds pressure against it. Then there's this washer that keeps your grease and stuff in your gearbox or around, protects your seal on the outer edge of the bearing. And that all just comes right out the side. On this one, 
I marked which side the gear was going to be on because by putting this gear on the right hand side and they tell that by these two bolts right here are what hold your rock guard on. So this is the direction of travel. So when you're cutting, the hay is going to be coming into it this way. So by having this gear on the right hand side, that's clockwise, the way your turtle is going to spin. If you take this and when I reassemble it, if I put that on this side and then your, your mating gear comes down and bolts on there, that will spin your turtle counterclockwise. It's the only way they reverse them. Um, inside here, mine is a pretty early model. This shaft has a, I don't know if I can get the light to show in there or not. That's got a hex spline in there. That slides over the drive shaft that goes through this whole cutter bar. Well, on the early models, that spline only went to the center portion of this, and then the other half of this was just a smooth bore. Now, this particular gear set and gearbox came off of a newer model mower, and it is splined all the way through because it's designed for segmented drive shafts. Mine is one solid shaft that goes through the whole cutter bar. It's uh, 109 or 10 inches long, I think. So that was one thing I noticed that was different by these two gearboxes. One other thing that is different is that the depth from here to here is about a quarter inch deeper on this newer style gearbox. When you bolt them up, everything's gonna be fine. And to do that, you just, you got these hexagon bolts. You slide those through. They sandwich. This is another one of the turtle drive gearboxes. This is a spacer. This is where that gearbox over there will bolt up to. This washer, if I can get that out. This washer is a kind of like a dowel. Half of it goes in the spacer, half of it goes in the gearbox, and it's tapered right here on this side. This side is flush. You want to put it in so that the tapered portion faces the outside so that when you're shoving your drive shaft in it naturally wants to feed it into it sorry about the poor video quality but i'm not very good at this but i thought it would be hopefully helpful to someone else now moving on to get these out i looked at it for a while and couldn't to know how I was going to go about it because once you take the snap ring off and everything, you know, you can't really get in there. And the only way they come out is this has to slide this way first. The gear has to come away from that side and then you can pick it up, pick it up out of there and feed it out. The bearing will stay on this side. This side here gets driven out. I don't know if I can position this somehow. I was going to have some help here for this, but mm, it doesn't take hardly anything to get them to move. I don't have enough hands. I'm going to set you down here for a second and I'm going to tap that out. there. That's all it took is a few taps. This slid in. I didn't quite take it far enough. Get a rag. Switch hands. And when I tore this cutter bar apart, this is another thing I did. I marked everything. I marked the turtles. I marked the gearboxes so I knew exactly which order they went back in. See, now you got your bearings out here. 
And now I just get on that, drive this bearing off of that shaft by pushing, beating on the inner race. And then you can get this out and then I stuck that in a vise and pried that bearing off of this end by driving down. And then your end result is your shaft with no bearings on it. I was able to source bearings through a company not too far from here. Um, these bearings were half price of what I could have, what I would have had to pay through Agco. And he had three different choices. I could not get an American made bearing for it. He said, but these out of the three were the best ones that he offered. He said they're, I told him they were going in a gearbox that's not very accessible. And this is what he gave me. So I will stop you here. I'll get things arranged. This is going on 11 or 12 minutes long. When I come back, I'll maybe show the reassembly of the gearbox, putting the bearings in, and we'll go from there. Okay, coming back, I got, this is our gearbox for reassembling. I put this bearing in over here. You always wanna start with the gear side so that you can feed it in. What I do is I put the bearing in there, got the snap ring in, I've got that spring in, I've got that ceiling cover so that when your bearing slides in it slides up against that and everything that only allows it to go that far. I don't have the proper bearing driver so I used a one inch drive inch and three eighths socket which slides right through this hole and is the right diameter that drove the bearing in and then I got it in most of the way and then I used the the gear and shaft to seat it the rest of the way. Now I've got to put this bearing in this side and I'll use the same method, use the socket and here's my bearing. Uh, the other side had a little bit of a burr on it, so it didn't want to start very good. This one looks like it's going to be pretty nice. Get the phone, feel hold the phone over here and uh, I'll put that bearing in. Make sure you beat on the out the outer race rather than the inside. You gotta be real careful so you don't get on that seal or you'll screw up the ceiling lip. That's why the socket is the same diameter as the outside race of the bearing. Then we take this this washer or the ceiling ring that goes in first. Now that bearing will only go in so far because this center shaft that the gear is on has kind of a boss on it that it rides up against. So when, you, when it bottoms out, you know you're as far as it can go. Then there's that little spring, retention spring. Get that seated in there.
Well, you get the gist of it. That is new bearings in an old gearbox. Hopefully this helps somebody. I will bring you back again when I start putting this all together in the cutter bar or in the machine.